the same way like mushrooms on a big long trip you just have so long to work with stuff that you can you can think about things longer Mm -hmm. this is the first one that it's ever felt like when it really hits you let go Oh, you're gone. You don't have any. You're time no to longer think, like, here. You do so, even if you smoke weed. You have like five ish minutes before it gets into your system, and you start feeling the effects. Like you exhale, <laughs> like yeah. that train left. The oh station. yeah, yeah. Not only that, like you feel <laughs> it build too. Oh yeah, like it was nice. And like like like. <clears throat> one of the questions I had from someone was like, "Well, when do you know to exhale?" I was like, "Oh, you'll know." <laughs> yeah, because you can't hold it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> because like I feel just this energy well up, and the vision starts starting to go. Yeah. It just the starts, vision started doing it before I even exhaled the last yeah. hit. Yeah, and, and like as that's soon where I was as like, that big this, exhale is in, it is just boom, mm-hmm. another planet. I wish I would have taken smaller hits through the whole thing. It's tricky and saved it more for the end than like going big, going big, and then like yeah, going it's what you could. it's tricky. Yeah, um, but and it only lasts ten minutes, man. And then right. I feel like normal, like yeah. relaxed, chill, like. I had my moment, like, I enjoyed the visuals, but, like, I feel, like, calm, like, yes. mellow. It was the first, this was the first compound I had done that, the second I finished doing it, I was like, I'm going to do more of that. Yeah, oh, 100. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, like when you lose your virginity, you're like, yeah, that's happening again. <laughs> every, yeah, especially, I'm like, it's 10 minutes, there's no hangover. Yeah. You're back on the fucking clock. Right. Like you could go out to your car on a lunch Bro, break. Like and you could, you could fucking. Rip that to another I'm not dimension. saying I want to like <laughs> handle heavy equipment no. or machinery right now, but no, I'm t- I could totally not. pull off some Excel spreadsheets, <laughs> right. spreadsheets shit right now with some good visuals and feel good about it. Yeah, I could probably do some decent work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Il- yeah, work in Illustrator or design yeah. work like this. Yeah, it depends on the amount of time I would have to engage with somebody. Oof, Oof. that gets tricky in general. I mean, even not, I think I'd probably be more patient coming off than I would be if I hadn't done anything, because people are exhausting, Dude, especially my, people now. It's, it's one of my favorite terms, uh, and it's it's to describe someone, the perfect person would for you is the guy who's going to come up, who's also a military vet, and wants to talk to you nonstop only about injuries in your leg. Yeah. And so... Uh, <laughs> this is from a buddy of mine, Andy Williams, who's a, a guitarist from um, Every Time I Die and also does, like, uh, professional wrestling. They call these people Punishers. They're like, really? fucking this Frank. Like oh, yeah, like Frank this. Castle. Frank <laughs> Castle just walked up and decided yeah, to you're... berate me with words for the last <laughs> – you know, they're not rude. Right. They're just going to make you suffer without realizing it. Yeah, they're fans. Yeah. In, in the truest sense, but they also can't just – show up and talk to you like a person right i you know i don't i've never understood that in life i don't think i've ever done that you're not a punisher right right, like don't get me wrong you've punished like i can definitely think of a few times i'm like fuck i just beat that person to death with words and they didn't they didn't ask i'm sure i've done it like totally by accident (laughs) like just trying to be like personable and like i try to make people feel comfortable around me so like (laughs) i like someone's like looking at me uneasily i crack a joke and i'm like oh man that's a pretty human thing to want to think about doing right like making people around you comfortable i'm gonna think about that forever but how about people that don't (laughs) read that situation <laughs> and they just sit there and it gets awkward because sometimes you don't even know how to end it you're just like all right well thanks for the support no man i really appreciate what you're doing and like yeah cool man like <sighs> i don't know what else you'd like from me <laughs> right like is it do i offer an autograph because right. i don't want to be that guy about no, it no. <laughs> or take i always i offer hey do you want to take a picture it's like no i'm like oh, oh okay cool right. <laughs> cool then i don't yeah it's it's oh, man it's it's very strange but yeah they're they're punishers they are the guy that wants to just talk to him about wrestling shit or the guy who wants to walk up like after he's played a show. Yeah. And you're trashed. Oh, yeah. And want to come up and talk to him about like chord progression or like <laughs> Bro. what Bro. like what <laughs> strings he uses. And he's like, like, what the fuck are we talking that's, about? That's <laughs> pre-concert shit. Right. Post-concert, pre-concert shit's how I feel. Right. Chord progressions. Post-concert shit's like, where's my fucking beer and person yes, to hang out with. person <laughs> yes <laughs> that was very very well said you like i did that i'm trying to be more yes. cognizant well, it's better you didn't say whole so <laughs> like i mean the fact that i made him a person mm-hmm. that should be enough 
I like that you used him. Right. Them. <laughs> they. <laughs> him a person. <laughs> they, they, hymns can be people. Yeah, hymns are people. Unless they're white hymns. <sighs> oh, man. <laughs> I don't want to do it. I'm no, just fucking around. No, we're not going just, just, just... But yeah, so like the the DMT thing of psychedelics, it's it's the most fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like, think I could have a night out on this. No, but that's not no, what no, I no, no, wanted no, the no, exper- no. from the experience. Um, night out LSD is the way to go. Yeah. I have to be visually engaged. Do you? For, yeah, <laughs> for for not to get like a little anxiety with it, just because I'm like, I never understood like. Like, the first time I did MDMA, like, I was, like, at a bar. And I'm, like, my normal demeanor is probably grumpy. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. <laughs> Like, uh, but, man, I was in such a great mood. Of like, just laughing, clapping. Like, I remember the songs. It was all, like, 90s yeah, shit. Yeah, dude, the, the heart shock was oh, open, man. man. Just was, love to the oh, moon. I had never been so friendly in my life. And I look at that with LSD. Like, I'm always in a really good mood, especially if I'm visually mm-hmm. engaged. But I also feel like if I don't have enough like engagement you gotta go find something. yeah like i get anxious i'm like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. this isn't fun man i uh went a little hard not too long ago <laughs> what's hard like four hits eight hits so for the night the the total of what i did fuck i don't think i've said this on the podcast <laughs> <You're> just, allegedly <laughs> sure allegedly 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 it was it was a lot, and I was going for it. Um, <laughs> you were, you were pring. Yeah, so it was. <laughs> I, I took uh, like four tabs of Molly, um, a tab and three quarters of acid, and probably four grams of mushrooms. So the Molly sounds like a lot, and the shrooms <laughs> sound like a lot. <laughs> The Molly, like you just hug everything. Yeah, yeah I, was a great, I had a fucking great time. I didn't drink a fucking. Yeah, lick, you know, it's just in a great fucking mood. And um, I remember, like, I had decided to take more mushrooms mm-hmm. at some point, and they were just like stems and caps, and like I'm. Yeah, I'm I grind like, them down. Oh, the worst. I have to like do at a powder. some point. Like I'm just like fuck it. And just start <laughs> jamming them in. It's too much like broccoli. So I'm like, <laughs> And I don't want to throw up. Dude, and it, like, I'm already dry mouth. And, like, as yeah. soon as I fucking got them down and, and drank water, like, I remember looking in the mirror and being like, those are going to be challenging. Yeah. <laughs> like, just immediately that, felt it. That was the line. <laughs> immediately felt it and, like, went and smoked an entire joint. Because yeah, that makes you feel better. Well, it's throttle control. Well, it's... it's That's I, how I... I that, look at it taking the edge off. Same thing, I, right? I just need the edge off I use and it, relax. Yeah, yeah. It's throttle control. Like, mm-hmm. there's no brakes. Yeah. But, but you can back off <laughs> the throttle. Train, this train is going downhill really fast. Oh, man, it is <laughs> moving. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and I was like, all right, I'm going to smoke this joint, and I'm going to find somewhere to sit down. <laughs> and that was the plan. <laughs> and it worked. It went swimmingly. It yeah. Was great. The, the, I do say, like, acid trips are a little too long for me. Like, I did four hits Yo. on paper. <sighs> yeah. And, like, I just did one after another, like, tracking every 15 minutes. And then, like... I feel like all my acid hits are generally the same. It's like the same things happening in my head. It's just to what degree. Yeah, I find I find uh, LSD to be a, a bit more of an upper than than mushrooms. Yeah. Oh, uh, I feel like mushrooms. I want to be. I want to sit in nature and listen and see things. Yeah. There's there's something right. more organic. Right. To the to the vibe of it. Right. Whereas LSD, like I care. could go sit in a bar. Yeah. yeah I could great. like go socialize in a park, like and be like not weird about it. Yeah. Like, I would. I would a hundred percent rather take a half a tab of acid than drink. Oh, when, yeah. I mean, I don't even drink. Like I no, haven't had dude, alcohol in like eight. I'll get drunk with my family. I got drunk once with my family in the last like eight years. I just for the it life of me, dude, do I can't. Me. I can't see any benefit. To an, to making performance of my life better from that chemical, one hundred percent. The sugar, the carbs, yeah. the, the the amount well, you, you have know, to consume. But, but even carbs, right? Or yeah, yeah, through alcohol. Yeah, correct. through alcohol. Right, right, right. I'm just talking about just alcohol alone. Like I don't have those with other. I don't have that with weed. I no, don't have weed that with doesn't any other have chemical. a big fucking negative. Tobacco, except does. for the munchies. The munchies <sighs> fuck me up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like Dude. I'm like on a diet kick, and I'd be at least three percent lighter, like less body fat if I didn't Dude, smoke. 
<laughs> so a couple months ago, we went to uh, Colorado and we were there for this like lifting event, like the online type mm-hmm. thing. It's a bunch of like USAPL lifters, like young kids. I'm, I am the fucking old man in the room. Well, I'm the old man yeah. in the room to the point that like most of these kids, A, have no fucking clue who I am or why right. this old guy yeah. is there. You're just like that guy that yeah. is important, but nobody really knows why, but they're yes. going to pretend like it because yes. they're there. I, yeah. I think that's mostly it. The that's people like that my whole know, life. know. You know right. what I mean? Like regardless. And so... Um, <laughs> We, we're uh, we're doing it, and so like one of the contests that I got thrown into was a donut eating contest. One hundred percent won it, and it's like me and two kids crushing. Right, uh, <laughs> I tied two other people for first, and so we had uh, three of us go together, and like I had just gone, like I yeah. was last up. So before, like while they're all doing theirs, I'm just outside fucking chain smoking <laughs> joints. <laughs> I was like, they're the, drug testing today. I'm coming munchies. in performance enhanced, baby. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> it's and, uh, amazing. Let me yeah. show you the games we play. Yeah. <laughs> and so hammered these donuts, right? And then, like, um, it's all via, like, Twitch stream. And so, like, the audience could do stuff. And, like, the audience could ammonia bomb you. Like, hit you with ammonia okay. while you're trying to eat. Yeah. So if they threw in for a donation, there were a bunch of ways to, like, sabotage. So you would have to hit them a thing. Them in the mo- yeah, so they would just out. open it under your nose. Oh, wow. While you're doing whatever. Um, how do you get in on that? It was fun. I, it was just that day. Oh. Um. So I'm doing it right, and so now I'm competing against these two yeah. kids, and uh, if I can't remember the names, I'm sorry for that. Uh, but both of them are very serious about winning this donut contest, and I couldn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> As I had just eaten whatever amount of donuts yeah. I had eaten, and uh, I don't want to eat anymore, and so I participated. You're right. And so what I did was I donated enough money. To hit them with non-stop ammonia <laughs> every the fucking whole. ten Six seconds seconds. for three minutes, <laughs> <laughs> and then I just sat there and didn't eat just, any just donuts. <laughs> like I didn't try to beat them. I just was like, man. <laughs> hey, like I, it's that's you just got to find a way to win. It was fun. Yeah, this this was what I found Plus to be the most fundraiser. entertaining thing for that. And dude, you were you were doing one what of you the were guys competing with me is so bummed about it. He's like, it's not fair. It's not fair. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, we're trying to raise money, man. Hey, bro, that five hundred dollars. We're trying to raise money. We're trying to raise money. This is absolutely what You're I should just be doing. Eating profits and donations. I'm making things happen, bro. <laughs> oh man. Mm-hmm. Oh god. So what have you been doing? Because we're like friends, and this is like yeah. the third time we've done this. So. Like, what have you been doing? I Dude. see you traveling the world. So like, I'm going to podcast this year's you been, on yeah, your own yeah. podcast. So this year's been slowed down travel-wise. Is it because of the Chinese thing? Yes. Okay. Because well, of the COVID. Then. <laughs> the old COVID. <laughs> like, we, we can blame both sides. It's yeah. Both it's equally hey, entertaining. I blame everybody. Yeah. Everybody's equally stupid. Well, I mean, look, it. at best case scenario, this thing got out of the Wuhan Institute. Sure. Of uh, where they work on viruses right right we've been funding research at the (laughs) wuhan institute for years yeah so either side saying the other let it out is kind of true the only reason why that gets sketchy is if they did it like they definitely shut down travel in china before they shut down outbound flights because they don't know look i think i think (laughs) so what they're doing do i think the virus was manipulated of course. Yeah, I, I I think that's a given. Yeah, Nobody but, really cares but they also that do that on purpose to test viruses sure. so that yep. we know if this does get to people what we're dealing hey, with. Hey, look, I don't even mind that the virus got out of the Chinese lab because that could happen in America. Too. Sure. It was, it was piggybacking on a researcher well, that visited her boyfriend. We also the fun, shady we fund that lab oh, yeah. because they can get shit done that we can't oh, do here well, because of regulations. Yeah, 100% agree. Right. I'm not, I'm not like, I, I strongly dislike China because they're a communist government. Like, okay. I strongly dislike China because of the way they treat their citizens. Fair enough. Like, I don't care that China is a communist country, and I don't care how they treat their citizens. I do care that they are aggressive towards America and markets, whether it's deserved or not. Like, I'm an American. I, sure. Like, I like the, my way of life over theirs. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I Like, my, I don't care. Like, I'm very much an isolationist as long as America is able to do what we need to do. Yep. But... I do kind of feel bad for the Chinese people that are like living under that government. Like, well, it's that's weird. Sh- I wouldn't want to live my life like that. I wonder what like the disparity in wealth is in somewhere like China because it like as a person who's a never been. Yeah. Now I do business with China I mean, on a regular basis, to death and they're awesome. China. The the people I work with, yeah. and I'll say that one of the things I've been impressed by, mm-hmm. um, my manufacturers over there. Like if I ever have a mistake, yeah. 
they own it, apologize, and make it right. Yeah. There is never a pass the buck to someone else. It is never come up with an excuse. They say, sorry, how can we fix this next time? Right. And they fix it. And sometimes the and dude to me, that dude, made the that mistake goes, goes so to the alley fucking and far. Gets shot in the back of the head, and it well, never happens again. I don't know how they manage their company, <laughs> but I know that the lady yeah. I talk to doesn't tell me, "Well, this guy fucked up." No, I get it. And I, hey, look, I have. I'm not going to defend Americans and say that they're not like fat, lazy, or stupid. Right. But at the same time, I, I am going to say like I, I tend to have more in common with a freedom loving fucking American than a co- yes, commie Chinese person. I mean, yeah. I know that's a shitty way to put it, but. They have beef well, with and, us, and too. Honestly, it's not a one-way yeah, street. And I don't know because I haven't <laughs> sat down and had an in-depth conversation, and there's a lot of reasons I can't. Well, with language mostly trans- because yeah. they're in China and it's communist well, country. And, language. and they don't have freedom of speech. Right. Right. That's a well, big one. I mean, not it's, th- it's also not like our media isn't fucking state-controlled either, hey, man. Like, well, I don't think they're state-controlled. I would say they're corporate-controlled. Okay. Like, so, <clears throat> just so we dive down that fun rabbit hole. <laughs> Here we go. Um, we should probably smoke more weed. We can yeah. There's nothing stopping us. Going to uh, it's America. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, <coughs> I'm bad at blunts and joints. Oh, they're pretty I never good. get a burn equal. I do. Pi- I do glass. Oh, right on. Um, and so, oh, God damn it! Bring it back. Rabbit hole. Rabbit hole. Yep. So, the U.S. media, like Nixon, got in trouble for it and mm-hmm. had to admit it in front of Congress because he got asked. Do you have CIA operatives writing journal papers and delivering things to the media? And do you have CIA agents that work for TV companies and news outlets? Yeah. And he was like, uh, yes. <laughs> yes, we pay people yeah. to control the message. Well, I don't think it's the same as that it's being like, look, is it, does America do propaganda? Yes. Like, we have entire films and stuff, and we have movies. But, like, I will say in mainstream media right now, you do not have an overarching pro-America message. <laughs> I think no. You have, I, think you have, I think you have people actively looking now and with expanding things that are trivial or small that we're dealing It's like, I don't, like, you and I might have beef over something, but sure. we're not going to put it on the gram. Right. And I feel like the media just puts it on the ground. And like it's just like, wow, man, we like you could have just called and said, "Hey bro, I didn't appreciate that you weren't rocking my shirt or something." So here know? here's what I think on those things, man. Is <coughs> I think that they have adapted to what we've told them we want. From the I'd say that goes all the way back to 9/11 with the 24-hour all, news cycle. All the way back. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 so like giving that giving us what we want right like so an example of that would be with covid yep and so with mask wearing mm-hmm. they came on and told us mask or not <coughs> important we don't need to wear mask direct from fauci yeah right well we got it from everybody multiple from times. from everyone yeah and then they came back and redacted that statement and said, well, we know we need masks, but we also know that there would be a shortage in masks and our healthcare providers need, the <coughs> need them. I believe this is a virtuous reason to lie to me. Oof. I don't, I would never say that. I would like, I think the miss from the beginning was, and this is like what we talk about before the decision makers in this country, the people that own the companies, the people mm-hmm. that have the power, the people that have the influence. It's all the boomers. The only people mm. that this thing, like we were even joking about it, like COVID really fucked us by not wiping out the boomers because how many problems <laughs> would we solve? Like, I mean, just even Social Security and Medicare. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, two thirds of our budget just suddenly showed back yeah. up in our bank account because there's nobody over the age of fucking 60. And like, hey, we would lose a lot of politicians, good and bad. Good and bad. But at the same time, I, I think the all joking aside with the death, the real problem is with they've had we've had four generations of the same leadership mm. because you know the gen x was basically beat by their parents like mentally and morally Hi. growing up right <laughs> yeah well like we're millennials we're transitionals that's You're true that's true yeah we're elder millennials so i looked at my mom my mom's 17 years older than me she's a 65 okay and i'm an 83 
So 18. my mom's she's eighteen. My mom is sixty seven. Okay, my mom's years 55. old. Right. So so like there's your mom's a boomer. My yep. mom's a Gen Xer. Right. So like I feel like the boomers generally just demoralize their kids, and then I feel like the Gen Xers. <sighs> but what, gave so, kids but with like that us. said, I believe the boomers. We're softer on us than the greatest generation kids. was on the fucking boomers. No, I don't think the, so. The greatest generation, I don't. Is it well, greatest generations? World War One, World, World War Two, okay. World War Two. Cool. So I'm talking about the right people. Yeah. So I think okay. So the boomers watched their parents come home from war, and the moms gutted out, and you had the 50s where everybody was fake happy, and that was what the 90s were like, and the 2000s. <laughs> yeah. So I think what the cycle was is boomers just morally beat their kids up, but they like had every opportunity. Like the boomers went to colleges; they were the wealthiest group. Yes. They had all the advantages of modern well, science. You mean they technology. bought houses, and then by the time they finished their mortgage, the house was worth ten times, times. what oh, they paid and for that it. Was this doesn't exist for us. No, we're getting like fucking one two Fuck. percent a year. After my mom like had three a checking booms. account that had a fourteen percent interest rate, <laughs> like I on mean, a fucking checking shit. account. Like, and that's I remember when my <laughs> and mom. And then they tell us like, "Well, you're not putting away money." I'm like, "What the fuck are you talking? How about? do you There's... put away money right. when you're check to check?" Like, my mom worked three jobs. You want to talk about a fucking super? I never because my dad was out of the picture. Okay, so it was just my mom. And you want to talk about working three jobs and like busting your ass, like. My mom's a bad bitch. And, like, she's worked harder than anybody I've seen in my life until I watch my brother Terrence go with his kids and stuff. And I'm just like, I don't see that in everyday America. I don't I don't work that fucking Look, man, hard. I'm glad people like that want to have kids. Because... <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, I'm I gotta have kids, man. Like, look, at this I, this would not be fair. If I'm I into this. Yeah, but, like <laughs> I could do this with a fucking kid right there. Like, the difference is, Matt, and I think what people miss in our generations is we watch three generations of just shit, yeah. and like our generation doesn't really know what good parenting is, bro. Like, so like yeah, when but, the idea <laughs> of doing something we're not good at that doesn't sound appealing. You know what I am good at? I, Making I think, money, lifting weights, traveling. Yeah, but I do think that we've been exposed to such a different variety of people versus our parents growing up. That you, it, it's not a vacuum anymore. You know what I mean? Like the city you grew up in doesn't matter anymore. I would, uh, mm, yeah, to, to an extent. To, sure, I think, I think, I think we've gotten really dependent and reliant upon social media and oh, and, and I, online. I agree to the point of like, I have like, and this is weird. And I was trying to define this because like you and I are friends, but mm -hmm. we're friends through social media. Yes. So, but we're like real life friends too. Yes. So but, I'm like, but do I have best friends, that. real life friends, Instagram friends? But friends most of my real life friends now are people that I met <laughs> via social media. I will call you just to see how your day is going. Same. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So like, I don't do that with 608 people on Instagram. Of course you know not. What I mean? Of course not. But you know what I mean though? But yeah. uh, without that thing... I don't know that we ever cross paths. That's fair. I mean, I, I yes, 100% true, because I would have never been a Highlands game guy, and you probably would have never been in a Strongman event. Right. Why Especially would we have ever cross people. paths at the Arnold? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think where I'm, what I'm saying, though, is it's like that people aren't taking it that extra step when they meet somebody they actually click with that no. we did. And the problem is they're putting too much of an emotional investment in that like it used to be like the 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 fucking on an airplane the person you flew next to like that right. one minute friend i think there people have a million acquaintances but they don't actually have friends like you could call me and say hey bro like fuck shit happened i need help and i'd be like yeah cool yeah, or, dude, yeah and that's that's tricky and that's something that i've been especially since social media is so fucking fake that i've been really wary about uh let me plug this in brand i'll give you a little extra light back here oh it's because that one shut off yeah oh no i don't care is the is the kid protector? Oh God! It's that like, dude. If you were half an inch taller. <laughs> oh God! Slightly more. Money. I made it. There we go. Oh God! I feel like that's bright. It's bright. It'll too late. I can It'll... actually see you now. Yeah, I know. So it's, it's better for the video. Yeah. Otherwise, we're just shitty too and dark, pixelated. Too, too... <laughs> <laughs> dude, like the video's trash. We filmed this on an <laughs> yeah. old potato. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and it's it's tough. To figure out the difference in the people, like acquaintances versus building relationships right. with people, right? And that to me, it's something I'm good at, is the relationship side. Um, I don't know if it's the 10 years I spent in outside sales or whatever it is, but I, I'm good at reaching people and maintaining and talking sure. to them and wanting the to see people. The maintaining part's hard. 
Yes. The, in the moment, like that flash pan, like the hey, meet and greet, like event thing, I'm great at. Well, because so it's so easy to be out of sight, out of mind. Sure. Um, the tough thing for me was making, realizing that, like, whether and it was <clears throat> Mark Bell or Kelly Starrett or any, right. any of these people that I've been lucky enough to hang out with, um, there was at some point I felt, I was like, you know, they don't ever come hang out. They don't ever come visit me. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I got I got a weird rub about that for a little bit because relationships are supposed to be mutual mutual but then at some point I I clicked over and felt I'm better getting to see this person sure. every so often so I'm going to fucking go right I don't have kids yeah, I can go see. That's them. how I justify travel. Like I go everywhere. Yeah, like I put forty thousand miles. Oh yeah, the you're you're road. you're a traveler, same as yeah. I am. But well, you do it better because you, like you've invested in like the truck. And the, <laughs> no, the, the, cool the Audi's shit. the Audi's great. The for Audi it. is great for going fucking one hundred and twenty when I'm ready to get there. <laughs> I hate driving like more than five hours and I get fucking anxious. Like I wake up and row. <sighs> I have my rower in my fucking tr- car. Oh shit! Because yeah, bro, I'm not fucking around. Like I'm done. Like. It's funny because I actually posted today on the gram doing some before and afters. I was inspired by your fucking fat receipt comment. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it like changed my it's life. A receipt, dude. It totally clicked. You're like, it's a receipt. And I was like, a receipt. You're like, for being fat. And I'm for like, being fucking I big and strong at thing. some point in my life. Well, and that's the thing is, I, you know where we fucked up? All right. Imagine There's a bunch go, of those. Imagine <laughs> if we could go back like 20 fucking years and just look Whoa. at fat self in high school and be like, diet and lift like properly just read one fucking book you it would have been it would have been cool to explain nutrition earlier yeah, right to, I, to, I was like fuck 21 and i started faking nutrition and i was like 26 i remember thinking before like, I actually I was like got i'm it. eating clean which it which was to me i was like <laughs> grilled chicken breast yeah. like those shitty frozen fucking chicken frozen breasts, nine dollars yeah. for like 30 five pounds, pounds right yeah. <laughs> so it was those yeah. on a tortilla which with yeah, hey tortilla. It said low carb. <laughs> it said and low they're carb. Not, they're trash. I uh, remember on a tortilla cheese. with hummus. Okay, so and I like, skip hummus because it's yeah, too or, high of fat. Whatever you'd put. I right? put cheese on it. Yeah, and so no shit. Like I was able to get over three, yeah. two, three, ten. <laughs> but also, I spent a chunk of my like lifting strongman time like get big, and yeah. it was about like okay, I have a heavy show coming up in a month. Like, I need to be 310 for it. So, like, I have a buddy, like, powerlifters will do that. Yeah. And, like, and I'm, like, an odd man in the strongman community because I was always, like, the strongman with abs or, like, veins. Sure, sure, Everybody sure. else was, like, 300 pounds. And I'm, like, mm. 220. Well, I mean, look what Hapthor and, like, Brian do yeah. to get ready for the Arnold because the Arnold's a heavy show. Yeah. Both those dudes roll in at 460. Oh yeah, but th- those are, they're also like fucking. They're like the one point zero. They're like, also only good to do that. And that's <laughs> anything hard. else. Is that's fucking hard. too like, much. It's strongman's one of those sports where if you're not like absolutely flawless, like you'll hurt yourself. Dude, strongman's like, such a hard. So sport. many different dynamics. Like you'll watch Pritchard just pop a hamstring. No fucking doubt that those like dudes are so gnarly strong. It, it's, uh, that's why I liked it because it was athletically yeah, strong. Yeah, same. I like doing log press. I yeah. like doing farmers. I like doing all those things. Right. Um, I just wasn't very good at it. Yeah, I was in the disabled division, so I just I was in a wheelchair. <laughs> Get me on in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, bro. I mean, you keep how fucking much around metal with equals? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we had dudes would show up and be like, "I have a finger amputation. I'm in the disabled division." <laughs> and they're like, "Get the fuck out of here!" I have here, a hangnail. Bro. I yeah, lost my uh, thumbnail a couple hey, weeks. Hey, bro. Like, oh man, it just fell off my big toe, and I've had to limp. You know, it's crazy. So I'm just gonna do this standing disabled. Speaking of, so you've done now the osteo integration. Oh yeah, the OI. How's that been? It was like, it, it's like in phases, man. Like sure. now I'm at the point where like I look back and it was a really good decision and a really good thing to do. And like, it's still painful every day yeah. because it takes like three years for that bone to heal around the So bone pain fucking I, sucks, dude. You you want to see some salty ass amputee? You want to see a room full of amputees get salty real fast? Start talking about bone, bone or nerve pain. Like people don't understand the difference between soft tissue, bone. Soft tissue is a joke. Soft tissue pain is like all day long. I'm like, hey, like three days out of surgery, I'm doing like fucking gym workouts. They're like bone pain. It's like. Dear Jesus, make me a bird so I can fly far, far Dude, when away. I, when I had <laughs> when I had the total knee done, right? Like they make you walk that day. Yeah. Ugh. And so, like, I'm out of surgery and I go for a walk, and while I'm fucked. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they just cut off my fucking femur and tibia and. 
put in metal and I'm walking on it three hours later. I knew that the pain I had been trying to get rid of Mm -hmm. was gone. Right. And I was like, oh, this is all soft tissue. Everything I feel right now. Really? And I was like, okay. So, like, the way they augmented you and the way they augmented Totally fucking different. Well, yeah, but it's kind of the same because they went into your bone and they went into your bone, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the difference is the the depth they went into. Well, I have metal on two bones. You really just have one. Right. So. hmm. Yeah. Mine's a lot harder. (laughs) Twice as hard, bro. (laughs) Twice as hard. I never thought of it that way. But, yeah, that makes total fucking sense. (laughs) It's crazy. The shit people say. I'll do pull up and, like, wow, bro, you just did, like. 25 pull-ups that's awesome but yeah it'll go like you think you could do it if you had both legs i mean what the fuck kind of <laughs> right. question is that man? It's an honest question. i don't know maybe 20 it's like you entering weird face. weight classes for arm wrestling <laughs> <laughs> like some weird rush. like they're like hey bro you're, you're so you're missing 40 pounds of leg you're 210 pounds we're gonna 250 ca- yeah, yeah yeah i'm 210 pounds right bro. fuck off <laughs> yeah i don't even know that weight's not like, there it, weighing in tell you what you lose a leg the way i right. do. right well that's what i tell people like leg on or leg off weight because it's like yep 215 or 203 and it's just like if i did a bodybuilding competition am i weighing in with my leg on or weighing out because that eight pounds so, could make a difference how many years so uh, so the integration so for people that don't know they they actually tap into the femur oh there's no tapping bro it's like jackhammer in with yeah the yeah yeah so i guess osteo integration they opened up my nub they hollowed out the femur right. they hammered in the titanium rod and then they cut the sciatic and femoral nerves and then they fed them into each other so Uh, one will eventually die off and the other will get to grow into its place all right so that was stage one they sewed me back up leaving the rod unexposed so the rods in my body uh, for 90 days oh shit so it's full tucked in oh yeah like it's fully on in the body okay for 90 days which was actually weird because it Actually, felt I got to walk for about two weeks before my last surgery with a socket oh, on, which you was could the old feel sport. the nub in there, bro. It was so it was like so rock solid with that metal rod in there. Like I was like, damn, this should just we'll just do this. Yeah, just do this. Like that's why I was okay if it fell because I was like, this right. is still very doable. But and then ninety days later, stage two, they open it back up, they detach and reattach all the muscles and ligaments that's left. Like I have a hip flexor, abductor, and a glute. So those weren't there. The, before that's all that's left okay the, that's so they were there they're just reattaching them to make gotcha. it more efficient and then they get cut the nub all the way down repositioned it and they have to do the flap for the hole in mm-hmm. your skin because i've yep. it's basically exposed so it's just there and then like basically nine 90 days later i could stand up and put 20 pounds of pressure on it and then they, it increases 20 pounds or 10 pounds every week until your body weight so it took me like four months to get to where i could just stand and then it's like another six to eight months to like step and walk yeah i bet it's great because you're not taking any load through the femur with the uh, with the the socket yeah it's all around the femur and the nub and that's why mine was because i'm three centimeters from a hip dysartic right so like i'm there's nothing left in my femur yeah 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 you're super short yeah so like i could walk 200 remember when yeah, like yeah, I had 200 meters i always have to stop and yep. wipe my nub off and then put my liner on i always had to carry a spray bottle i was always wearing ranger panties like yep. i didn't realize how tediously painful my life was until after the surgery so as painful as the, this was worse than losing my leg the first fucking time Fuck. period like i would rather have gone back to afghanistan and got hit by a fucking rocket and relive that experience than fucking lay down at this table for oi again but, like, having done it and being past it, the fact that I can fucking drive my car without sitting on a socket, the fact, dude, when I sat down for the first time in a rush, I used to have to take off my pants, my socket, my liner, my ranger panties, and then I could sit down to shit. Right. I walked in the bathroom for the first time without even thinking just about it. Just pulled and my shit. pants down and sat down in normal. And, like, I made a post on the gram about it. It was, like, fucking life-changing. Because I don't think people realize, for the first time in, like, 10, almost 11 years, I just went in and took a shit. It wasn't a process. There wasn't take off your pants, make sure there's not piss on the ground, like fucking take off your leg, lean it on the wall, undo your belt, take off your liner, put it in there. Oh, get your spray bottle out. What a time suck everything becomes. Well, that's why I would lose some of my competitions. At the CrossFits, I'd have to pop my leg off to do pull-ups or it'd fly off, and then I'd have to put it back on and transition and then do deadlifts. So I was like, fuck, man, if if I had had this at 26. Sure. But I mean, I mean, I never really lost anyway. But. You know, also, if I didn't have balls, I'd be called Sally. Careful, you know, <laughs> careful, or whatever no, name careful. I chose. Careful, 
for that matter. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, ifs are tricky. Uh, yeah, it's fucking wild, though, dude. But we, we, didn't, have, we didn't have man. the tech. Oh, well, that's a, this is all. I'm only number 23 in the U.S. Fuck. And, like, I passed the mechanical, which is this knee. I got a 40 out of 40 on the walking assessment. Mm-hmm. Or, I'm sorry, the microprocessor. And then I also took it on the mechanical knee, which is my 3R80, the one I love. Okay. And that one I got a 39 out of 40 on. And I'm the first amputee to walk on a mechanical knee. So with uh, OI in the what's US. the difference there? Uh, stabilization muscles. Like, like in the U.S. under this under this study, like we they hadn't had anybody walk on a mechanical with the... So mechanical's the got like a processor in it? No, the, the microprocessor has a processor in charge. Uh-huh. The mechanical is just like a fucking hinge. Okay. So um, I'm a 3R80 fan. It's a mechanical knee. And uh, and you like that over the processor? Yeah, the processor's heavy. It pulls on my bone. This is gotcha. like this is like driving a Bentley. It's like smooth. You can feel it. You're not fucking tearing around corners. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But it's like super comfortable. Yep. The 3R80 is like my like fucking McLaren. Like okay. It's the fucking hammer hey, down. We're going to go fuck shit up. Yeah. And it's not going to be the smoothest ride, but it's, gonna, it's not going to feel horrible. Um, and that's where I was at. And I went blank. No. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So number twenty three passed the assessments, walked, blah blah blah. In retrospect, like it was absolutely worth everything because like life is at a very basic level, just a million times easier, and requires like I don't think about walking anymore. That's crazy, right? Right. Well, that used to occupy everything. People are always like, "Why are you looking down?" I'm like, "Cause I have to look for slight elevation changes in concrete or like nicks, and I'm constantly looking down." Man. And it just, it changes everything, man. It, it changes everything. Yeah. I remember even just with my knee, like, whenever shit went bad, like, I couldn't go up and down stairs. So I no. Couldn't, yeah. I couldn't step with this leg first. Right. At all. It wasn't like it hurt. Right. It just didn't work. It would just shut the fuck down yeah. and not let me put pressure through it. Like, mm-hmm. I'd have to jump over it. Oh, basically. yeah. Well, you're really just using momentum from the yes. step off from before. Right. Yeah, dude. And so. Been there. Just even that change for me, which is so less dramatic than than going through this for as many years as you have like but man the empathy i've got for what you're saying of like every fucking thing is such a goddamn ordeal bro where you park going to events like sporting events like and i tell people it's not dude like, i fucking jogged and cried well yeah dude and like i i, I don't think I'll ever, i don't really like care to run again well but but yeah. sure but, but it, like and, and i'm not a runner yeah no, but I it guess. was the idea that like i could I was never going to do this. Yeah. Well, like, I, w- I started watching Weta run, like, uh, two months ago. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, now, because I'm kind of, like, with the augmentation. But I'm, like, also scared, because if I fuck my femur up, it's, like, yeah. game over. Don't And you're like, go. Jay, you got to get all the way up the <laughs> top of the hill. Bro, I'd be a horrible hip disarm I tell you what, he fucking No, he, I didn't even know he was a hip disarm right. for, like, the first two or no, three years I knew No, he it. No, and, like, the thing is, like, he does it without bitching. I bitch all the time about my shit. Like, I just do it because it makes me feel fucking better. It's because he's part Asian. He just bottles it up and sells oh God, it. Oh, God, he's got to. He's got, a, he's got a, It's on, like, online or something. There's a or, distillery. It just drains like out fucking, of him. What is he, Korean? Like, there's just, like, a fucking boat in Korea that's just selling fucking bottles of Jason's Jay's Tears. He just ships fucking, it to W. Bush. He yeah, paints with him. Just, Dude, he loves the guy. He golfs with him. I know, him. he's he great. Fucking, dude, and like, <laughs> Good for Jay, I met dude. him once, and I just, I didn't have that connection hey, with him. Jay's rad. Yeah. Good good for both of I them. I met Bush, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was weird, because Obama was super personable, but like, I just. Of course he is. Yeah. But, Seems like the fucking nicest dude in the world. Well, yeah, because he like. When he shook my hand at the Army Navy game, he grabbed like my bicep and he made a comment. Yeah. And I was like, "Careful, sir, that's Fox over there." <laughs> he like legit laughed, and like Joe was there. Joe gave me a coin for making the joke. He's yeah. like, "Not a lot of people will fucking do it." I'm like, "Hey, man, like, what is he gonna do? Like, what are you? You gonna reprimand? I got blown up? What are you gonna at Walter yell at me? <laughs> that just right. lost his leg like four right. months ago. That made a shitty joke <laughs> to the president. Get the fuck out of here." Yeah, but like, and that's that's why I just tell people like doesn't have to be the same it no. doesn't have to be the same no <laughs> no it doesn't dude no it doesn't yeah yeah it's fucking wild though man so so how long have you now not had a leg uh january 19th it'll be 11 years wow yeah so like three so like four. a third of your life yeah that's what the, i actually think about that sometimes like i lost my leg at 26 yeah and like someday i'm gonna turn 53 yeah there's a like, day where you yeah you've, where i've been an amputee longer than i was a yeah. able normal yeah, yeah, person yeah. and like i've had that thought and like i'm at what point does this like 
because it's real easy to think like the best part of you was lost when you lose your leg or something like that. So you're kind of left with the bullshit to stew in and it takes a while to come out of that. And it really just, you have to learn to like live your life efficiently, like mentally, emotionally, and like physically. And it's hard because like the physical stuff is the shit people see. The emotional stuff is actually the processing of it. And that's where a lot of guys in my situation are the weakest and the mental we think we have a good understanding on, but a lot of people don't understand that that's like, that's something I think when you level up in life, it just clicks. So like, I didn't become a good, I didn't know how to be a good Lieutenant until I was a captain. You know what I mean? Sure, sure, sure. So it's like, and then that's where the mentorship comes in. Like, Hey asshole. (laughs) Right, right, right. right, (laughs) Like here's how to be better, you know? And I don't think that's happening. I don't really see any clear lines of mentorship, especially in the (sighs) male community. It's very, it's odd, right? Yeah. And like, man, I've had a handful of people like, DM me asking if I offer mentorship over the last couple of months, and I have no fucking idea what to do with that other than, like, uh, I don't offer are that. Are you losing a leg? Like, do you just want to bench press a lot? I, like, I, I don't know. Are you talking about life? Because if you're talking about life, bro, I feel like there's better people. I agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, please. Yes. Yeah. 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 What are you thinking? <laughs> like, I mean, I, I don't think, uh, and I think that probably comes back to both of us where what we do is just what we've done. And, like, the way we approach it is just a fact of life. Like, I lost out on so much income being an athlete and competing and, like, trying to win and become a high level at this. So I didn't have 10 years in a career or eight years in a career like my peers did. Right. And coming out of it, I feel like you either got to start a clothing company, you got to go coach, or you like, (laughs) I'm not doing doing any of that. (laughs) (laughs) And I I was, was, like, earlier when we were lifting at first form, like, um, a thought that I had and I'll lose it and I'll get it back. But, oh, like we were talking about just being good enough at everything. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Like, and that the was new, new philosophy. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, hey, I just want to be like a C-plus student in general. <laughs> That's all I ever day. was yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Let's not hey, pretend bro, I was I, making I fucking rushed grades in school and college. Dude, I I realized I didn't care. Yeah. I, I my made, beat my ass when I didn't care. So I got in trouble for grades. Yeah. So I made whatever grades got me not in trouble yeah that was a's in my no, house see i didn't my have that gave, i got like two b's and like she'd like take money away from me on c's, c's. for me were trouble c's my mom I, if i brought home a c like i might have brought home a c once but i told her about it and i braced her for it and she yeah. was still fucking pissed yeah 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 and i don't I got, think and that, i got grounded and got fucking i got i got beat for or, or you know got spanked or whatever for for bad grades probably up through elementary Oh, um, bro, my mom tried to spank me one time in middle school, I and I just turned around. I was like, Mom. What are we doing, Come dude? on. <laughs> like, I, we, I remember. Can I, can I, do you want me to fake cry? Can we just not do yeah, this Yeah, there was some point where <laughs> where something had come up, and Dad had tried to jump back into that disciplinary role. Yeah. And I think it was, like, middle of high school, and I just remember, I'm like, we're not doing that. No. Right? And that, my mom was, I didn't have to deal with any, like, male It was probably some point like, after the, the, the last time we arm wrestled. Yeah. And he was like, well, shit. (laughs) Well, it's like, I, like my mom, you know, God bless her, but like relationships weren't her thing. And like, I just, it was never in a situation where like, I mean, I'm a 300 pound high school kid that bench presses 400 pounds, bro. Like, I mean, I appreciate what you're trying to do here, man. What kind of world do you think we live in? (laughs) (laughs) But I didn't have a curfew. I got good grades. I played like three or four sports. Like I, I was accomplished in high school. I went to college, like. I barely graduated that. So, like, I did what I was supposed to do. Did you do college before military? Both. I okay. went and then dropped out and then joined the military. And then, like, I dropped out with, like, two classes left. That's fair. So I went back, and then I started my master's and dropped out again to go catch up on the war. And that worked <laughs> out. <laughs> I was that naive guy. I remember talking to my commander. I was like, hey, sir, look, I, I just finished my bachelor's. I know I got, like, two more semesters to do my master's, but can I just get the fuck out of here? I got it. He's like, I what are you worried about? It. I was like, I don't know. Like, the war's winding down. I don't want to be that guy that misses it. And he's like, really? And I was like, you know. Dude, misses and, like, it. legit signed my paperwork, and I was out. So, that mentality, that idea that you're missing the war. So, that's something that's so foreign to me because my brain says. What if you just trained in the Highland Games every year of your life but never actually went and competed? I, I get that, but also. Same concept, just take it to the next shot level. At like, bro, but, like, it's weird. Like, when you're getting shot at, you know you're getting shot at, but you're not thinking about getting shot at. You're thinking about what you have to do to get out of that fucking situation efficiently and maximize, like, your soldiers, like, chances of survival while still winning the battle. And it's sure. weird. Like, and we talked about that, too. It's just training. 
Okay. Like, that's what's weird is, like, I mean, I guess. Right, but there was, at some point, there was something in you that wanted to go that route. Yeah, because it's called adventure, bro. Like, <laughs> okay. here's the thing. Like, <laughs> hey, man, like, I look, I, like, I, people may not understand the thought process. And the reason why I'm super comfortable with my decision making is because I know exactly what I would do if I was in a situation where I knew or thought I was going to die and how I would respond. I, I I validate and believe everything you're saying. Yeah. I just think it's so. My brain was like, Mleh. yeah. yeah but, you know, the thing is too, like the way I grew up, like I'm five generations military, mm. and my grandfather was a POW in Korea on the USS Pueblo. Yeah. Well, so my like, grand, both my grandparents are military, but everyone was. Yeah. Well, it's also like you know, my great grandparents were in the World War One yeah. and two, like and like so. My family's just kind of always done that. Like my grandfather was. Vietnam five times and a Mar- nine in the Marine Corps. Now, I mean, I got a healthy dose of the History Channel growing yeah. up. Hey, bro, like I used between to love that it and John it Wayne. Yeah, between Fuck, John Wayne yeah. and Elvis fighting bad people. See, I did. I just went straight to like fucking Arnold and Predator. Oh, see, I had dad doing see, doing that whole. I, there era. was no dad, so it was just um, my mom letting me fucking do like what was Arnold cool and Predator at the time. were cooler. Yeah. Than Elvis singing songs on a boat. Bro, with a like, bunch of I dudes. don't know why, but like the late 80s, early 90s action movies were They're just great. fucking amazing. Because, dude, Predator, Predator, <laughs> Terminator Predator is just that. such sweaty dude porn. Oh, it's just but, bro, and it's like it's and everything, and it's, and it's, and and it's like honor killing and fucking macho ness. It's like everything we should just be making fucking everybody in elementary school watch. It's also one of the top political propaganda films of our time. Sure, man, whatever. Look. So. We have Arnold Schwarzenegger as a star, okay. becomes a governor of California. Right. We have Jesse Ventura becomes a governor of Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> we have the um, the uh, the native guy, I re- the guy that died on the fucking yeah, log. The fucking yeah, cut his chest. Yeah. He's so sick. He ended up having holding political office in Kentucky. That's awesome. I think governor. Hey, bro. And so, like, I mean, and Apollo Creed. But right. well, I was gonna say, I, feel, I knew Apollo was coming out. Yeah. Like that's Apollo just Creed's in there. Like. And so, like. <laughs> Three fucking state governors were in Predator. <laughs> the fuck? Bro, I like. I, I, there I, isn't another film with two. I'm gonna be the first Instagram check. Well, I take that president. back. Probably uh, Running Man because Jesse Ventura and Arnold are both yeah. in it. Well, and I think a lot of that too is a lot of those guys didn't get there. Um, oops. All good. I'm sorry. Um, it happens. No, the eighties, the eighties fucking action movies. That's that was lit. That's where it's, it's at. It's the best. Well, because the action stars all look like Arnold, and we don't have that. We have Jason Momoa now. Like he's the only big Jack dude. No, The Rock. The Rock is. The yeah. Rock's fucking incredible. Um, yeah, I like him. I mean, I haven't met him, but sure, I like, I, I like what he's about. I have. I've never never crossed paths with him. I know. I got a lot of one degrees of separation to people who've dealt with him on a yeah, regular basis. That's like my whole life. And <laughs> I've never heard a negative. Eh, I don't think people are, like, I don't, I don't think, I don't know how many people are comfortable enough to ever find out if there is one. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, I, he's, I know he's, he's great to He's got to be so deal protected. With. Well, oh, and then, like, he's, he's, he's got to have some kind of approach to life that allows him to maintain that kind of persona. Yeah. And make it, like, as real as possible without being fake about it. Right. So he's got to be generally happy. He's got to do generally what he wants. And I think he probably does. And, and I mean, uh, like, For still, the right reasons, too. Like, still, I don't want that level of fame, though. No, I want to be famous in Europe and rich in America. Like, I want to go to Europe and be bougie as fuck in, like, 36 countries and then come to America and just people walk by me like some fucking I, I would mark as, like, vet. what I've always thought as the sweet threshold of like fame to wealth because fame without the money part super lame <laughs> yeah like i know yeah no i get it that helps. you definitely want rich and You're famous right. you don't well, just want play famous. soccer in europe because everybody knows who the fuck you are and you make so, fuck you money and well, then, then you let's, live let's in, get to going <laughs> bro <laughs> we'll just, this is not a soccer physique dude. we got two and a third legs right. between us hey look we're just looking to feel real low <laughs> level club team <laughs> practice squad yeah i mean hey look man i can't even run water bottles so let's just be honest about where i think this is going so i think like rogan's got a pretty sweet spot yeah because i still think because because he's a normal sized guy he can probably still go out like no 
I think Rogan probably. I think if he throws on a hoodie and a and a hat, and yeah, like hasn't hasn't shaved, he can go to the store. Sure. Now someone may stop him, but it ain't like the fucking Rock. I don't think in. it's gonna turn in. Yeah, like I think if the Rock or Taylor Swift walks in, because I watched it happen at the hospitals when they'd visit, people <sighs> will flock. It's crazy. Whereas I think yeah, Joe could probably depending on where he's at, and the te- like. I don't think most people tend to flock in like public anyway. Right. I think they get like. Barstool guy, the old president. Yeah. That dude probably gets recognized fucking everywhere. Yeah. But but he also looks like a guy that I think I've seen a dozen times. I feel like I've seen For him. whatever. I watch the pizza reviews all the fucking time. He's, I love Dude, him. they've killed it. Yeah, well, because he doesn't, he's like, doesn't give a fuck. And he's honest. Give a fuck. Um, being as famous as The Rock, I think, would get old. I wouldn't want to do it. Like, I, the only story I've heard was uh, Nico, my tattoo artist, works on him. Yeah. And, um... Nico was saying, so he he had redone the the bull sleeve or whatever like that, and said like, dude showed up at the at the shop to get tattooed nine nine p.m. when they agreed, yeah, and rolled in by himself and was no hassle and just nice guy. At dark sat. like that, he could probably get away with it. Yeah, well, and that Nico doesn't start tattooing before that time anyway. I don't know why he books anything earlier than that because he's not going to start tattooing until yeah. after the sun goes down. Right. Well, uh, I mean that's the life you live. Yeah, and he's good at what he does, so. He can, he can do whatever, whatever he wants. He wants. <laughs> so <laughs> there's one of him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so he said, like, we were taking a break and just looking at the art in the front of the shop. And there's a big glass window on the front of the shop. And just somebody passing by at probably 11. It, like, just glanced over and then saw him and turned and stopped and knocked. And he said, as soon as he stopped, uh, you know, the rock went back to the private yeah. room. Just, just skated. And Nico was like, no, 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 no. 15 minutes later, there was 50 people outside. 100%. That guy called someone. And said, hey, the rocks are getting tested. And people just fucking went downtown. See, that would be annoying. Super annoying. That would be annoying. Like, and also, like people what's would, best case scenario for any of you people? You get to say hi to, to the To get rock. a photo with him? I mean, that's. It's so fucking lame, well, dude. Well, they just ruined the whole experience for him without even realizing. Yo. Like, dude could have just been like, and they said no, and then Even laughed. weirder is you want to get a photo to show people who aren't there. Like, none of that experience is for you. Right. No, and that's why, you know what's weird is I've, I've never been the dude to take photos. I'm always, like, the guy, like, trying to find other people's shit to share. Look, I take photos because it's work. Yeah, we, we know that's part of the game. You're but much better at that than I am. Yeah. And I'm I'm really careful about it. Yeah. Because I, I, I'm lucky enough to hang out with people who are... More well known than me. That's all my <laughs> right. friends are more well known than me. That's why I don't so, post pictures. Right, like, I'm because, like, yeah, because it's like, am I just? I know I'm not trying to get kicked followers. out of the room. Yeah. Hey, bro. I like being in the fucking room, I, man. I, I'm in like rooms with people with hundreds of thousands and millions of followers. And I'm like, hey guys, no, I, I, I almost hit. No, I mean, you know, I might hit eighty someday. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and I don't care. Yeah. No, I mean, I honestly, it's kind of nice because when i travel i can go to gyms for free yeah. and i have no problem throwing up a selfie with the gym right. that's willing to hook me up well not only that they're being rad yeah and like i've gotten to the point now where i i just buy my friends clothes you're yeah. always sold out of my size and we we i mean bonnie and i travel and for the most part like if we go to a gym we pay a drop-in fee. i usually like, and pay. i, I always pay. offer but like yeah. a lot of times like of hey, course. bro like and i'm not gonna make a scene i'm 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 never gonna argue. you don't need this ten dollars yeah. any more than i care about giving it sure to I, I would rather be stoked on your gym and talk about it. Yep. And me paying a drop-in fee doesn't change whether I'm or not totally gonna I'm going to take a free post. week-long post, though. <laughs> yeah, right. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like, hey, man, I don't mind paying. No, it's cool. Like, I appreciate what you do. Cool. <laughs> I'm not going to say, I'm not going to, hey, look, dude's No, good. no. You know, like, I learned a long time ago that it's like, I used to turn people down for things. Like, oh, no, I got it. Or like, hey, let me get your coffee. I'm like, no, nah, I appreciate it. Or like. Because I felt uncomfortable with it. Sure. But now I'm like, if that's that dude's gesture and it's going to make his day and it's going to save me 13 seconds, then, like, fine. For me, fine, it's one of whatever. those things that, like, I'm always probably going to offer to pay. But if you interject with, no, man, I got it. Yeah. I'm not going to argue. The se- I'm not giving a second right, and push that's, to and pay. That's, I'm with like that, that with friends. I'm right. talking about, like, strangers. Same like, thing is, like, if you go to pay and I'm like, hey, man, let me get it. And you say, no, I got it. Go. Yep. Good, bro. Do you? Cool. Hey, I will. Had a good month. I will back away, and I will be aware the next time I'd like to pay for things, I'll get my fucking card out. Yeah. <laughs> Won't end up here with alligator yeah. arms, not trying to reach for the bill. Well, that's I. That's why I like it. I don't. It always depends on like who travels and where it's at. That's the way I look at it. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if you're coming to, like, my city and I'm hosting you, Hell yeah, like, dude. I'm going to pay for dinner and we'll have yep. fun. Like, if we're meeting <laughs> up somewhere, like, it was my idea, like, I assume I'll pay. Like, most of the time, we'll split and, it. And, like, <laughs> and if I got the last one, you get to... And that's really how it comes down. <laughs> it's fine by yeah. me. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> that, that comes into that situation where you're doing on travel. Look, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be fortunate at this point in my career that don't I don't have, have to concern myself we, with how much a dinner yeah. costs. No, it's nice. It's because I'm not responsible for anything. I tell people all the time, like... I'm like, I'm like a, like a 37 year old dude with no real life responsibilities. That's on like a military retirement. Like every second. I mean, it's been a long ride, but it's not a horrible one. No, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of ride left. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm just trying. <laughs> <laughs> there's a ton of ride left, man. I mean. Uh, what do you think a fair age that you think you could live to is? As, like, a bigger dude that's, like, fucked his body up, like, so doing shit. Like, this wh- is actually a thing that sparked a big change in my life, is this whole thought. I got to piss, bro. Go piss. Okay. Go piss. We can cut We can cut out. Okay. We'll wrap this up. All right. So we're back. The state's fucking cold. Um, so... Yeah, so, like, that idea of how long could I live. So, my dad died um, at 62, and he passed away the day before I turned 31. And at that point was this really big feeling of, like, is this halfway? Right. And so, while I believe I can stack the cards in my favor, that 62 isn't when things are going to catch up to me. But with cancer or anything else, you don't fucking know. Right. Right. You know, um, I mean, do I think old age is what gets me? I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. There's no fucking it's way, be old dude. Age. And so, with that said, like, I looked at that and I was like, if that's the case, and if I've got 31 years left, I'll, I'll, I'm living that way. Right. And it's, it's like 1,860 weeks. But that's see, I broke mine down like that too, man. And like, it, it doesn't fucks- matter if it's a good week. That you did happy things. Yeah. Or a bad week that you did a bunch of bullshit you don't care about. Right. It's still gone. <laughs> right. And it's, well, that's the worst part is like, that's why I like every day, I, like I strive for efficiency. And like Dude. I do it through a routine. Yeah. And like, like, you know, we have slightly different approaches on like fitness right now, but like we're generally yeah. in the same ballpark. Like I'm usually a Look, step or two behind We you. both want to go to the gym to feel better. Right. And like do it in a way that's like productive towards life. Yes. Now. Like that's where, like, where we were getting at earlier, but. Man, like, okay, so, like, average male lives to, like, 75, we'll say, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm definitely like, over halfway. E- either, yeah, any way I want to slice it, dude. Are minimum. So now you add in the complications from all the medical stuff, and then yeah. I start thinking about, well, if you lose, like, five or six years from being in the Army, and then you lose another five or t- ten years because you got blown Rampant up. Rampant drug use. You're, oh, my God, like, look at my hairline. Like, <laughs> so, I don't know. So, my income in modern <laughs> science, I expect 120 easy. Bro, you bet I'm going to Elon Musk this bitch. Uh, like, I'm like, my friends are trolling me to shave it. But the truth of it is, man, is I start looking at like, okay, so like 75 is the average healthy person. And I'm like a, like a healthy-ish person with medical issues. Like, let's say 65, right? Sure. Holy fuck. That's you're quick, talking, dude. Yeah. And then you're talking about, okay, how much of that is quality? Because then it's like, well, if I'm already struggling, to I do hope this, everything this until the car goes off the cliff, man. <laughs> God, man, like just like let me let me get to that point where I start mentally losing it and physically incapable, and then just like let's go out like in a gangster ass way. I know that I'm definitely not waiting for whatever this point in my life is to feel like I can start doing. Yeah, I think and that's I think a lot of people don't have we don't have a lot of problems that normal people have no. because we don't have no one depends on me to feed them no like everybody in my but life I, is so if anything everybody in like, my like life I do, is like I do oh lo- it's Derek he's my brother he sleeps on the in the in the guest room sometimes like so. I do a lot of things that create income yeah but I don't feel like I have a, like I, I say that all the time I go I don't have a fucking I don't job. have a job and by job 100%. I mean like I don't have a thing that I have to give eight hours of obligated time to every fucking day anything. no I can get up and work for Fucking, I, I could not work for a week. Yeah, look, I'm going to have some days where I'm going to work for 15 hours on, on hate stuff. 100%. Because cause it's go, because it's there. Well, that's what, I, everything I do is emotional when it comes to, like, the creative part of what I do. 
Like when I have that emotion, that's when I start doing the creative thing. Yeah, dude. And that's Same. what I think people are missing. Same. That's it's why the I, same like, for me. That's why I've got to travel. That's why I've got to, mm-hmm. like, I figured out five different drops Yeah. while we were on the road for the last 20 days. Mm-hmm. Like, one of them is high-key fucking inspired by a color palette out of a photo <laughs> I took. And I'm like, this, 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 yeah. and this. I can turn those into Pantones and create this right. entire fucking look. And then, like, the other stuff I've been able to put together because I have some freedom to think. Mm-hmm. Whereas, well, even more, you have freedom to be inspired. Because right. people get stuck in, like, normal for us is, like, on the road. Like, I, I get pretty comfortable. I hate staying in hotels and stuff. But, like, at the same time, like, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't sitting on the balcony in New Orleans looking down, smoking a joint, not, like, writing notes and, like, making jokes. Like, dude, I yeah, want to do stand-up so bad. Do it, but, dude. Oh, Fuck man. it. I just I can only take so much public failure at once. You know <laughs> Look, I mean? okay. I here's here's none here's, of my here's jokes how it are goes. leg-based, though. Perfect. Like, I'll open with one to get even easy better. to laugh. <laughs> but even, even better, just fall. <laughs> just be like, oh, <laughs> people spin it no you like you know it's bad when everybody responds right right falling. right like an 80 year old woman loses her balance everybody goes like or just this. start with saying like i don't want any sympathy laughs yeah don't don't um, don't waste my fucking don't insult me so here's here's the only thing if you if you want to do stand up right you're gonna suck at it oh horror like that's the worst part of course you're gonna i haven't sucked at anything in a really like long time, like bro. do you play guitar no how do you think you'd be good at guitar right now? Well, I would never <laughs> even try. I would so, lie about it. I'd be like, my so like any so any sports or anything was. else that we got good at. Yeah, like, a lifetime of dedicated well, it, training. It took ten years. Yeah, and so like, well, that's why I think we're good at like one thing because we were the guys that only did this, and now we're like, bro, we could do all of this and be this good. Right, at it. and that, so that's something like me and Derek Woodski have talked about a lot. That our training went from being very specialized uh-huh. to now it's general. Right, and 100% agree. Now yeah. it's like a Whereas lifestyle. normal people go the other way. Right. Well, they have to. Yeah. Well, because we were so dedicated. Like, people don't understand, like, how hard, even in, like, a, a non-primary sport, like Highland Games or, like, Strongman or Look, Disabled. No, I don't care like, what the sport is. There's no I, sneaking your way to best in the world. <laughs> exactly. And that's what I keep Someone telling Someone else you, like, gives a shit. Hey, bro. Like, number one in the world. Right. Like, just doesn't matter what the pool is from the world. Doesn't matter. It's the fucking. I don't care what it is that you're best in the world at. It's fucking, fucking cool. countries <laughs> showed up with a dude and said we're better, and you said nah, nah bro. Today, <laughs> <laughs> and like, like, and that's I don't like. I don't care what sport it is. Like curling, no. I watch curling. I'm like, damn, dude, best in the world at a thing. Fucking dude. Like, so that that's my the, the new obsession, right? Is yeah. this idea this uh, super tourist? Yeah, is what 100%. Kelly Sturette calls it. Yeah. And so it's like, what things can I just get all the newbie gains and be proficient? That's it. So whether that's yoga, uh, I've just started doing boxing. Yep, I do, I started doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Right, same. Yeah, uh, my hip just kills. Bro, I don't. I, I yeah, hey, I'm okay. going to boxing. I think because I I, will, I think I'm interested to do Jiu Jitsu, but it's going to end up having to be like disabled Jiu Jitsu. Well, I know a guy with a black belt. Yeah, and I'm only going to roll and train with him privately. Yeah. That's how I do mine. Yeah, I don't. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. like I don't. Like, no, I, I tried the public classes, and I just... I'm not interested in rolling with your ego. I don't know. I ain't trying no, to no. win, dude. You know, there's not even a whole lot of ego in it. I mean, there's always that guy that, like, takes it too I'm serious. terrified of that guy because I... That guy's I an can't amateur. can't be hurt. That again. guy's an amateur. Yes. That's what, that's, that's what I tell people. I'm like, hey, bro, it's cool. I can learn from a professional. Yeah. Like, I tell my friends, like, hey, I'll and give you a basic diet. I, I really enjoyed the trained. little bit of jiu-jitsu I did. Yeah. Um... No, the same thing. Look, I, I can give some basics on, on diet, but I'm not a fucking nutrition coach. I'm a Derek coach. Kind of. I'm kind of a Matt well, coach. Well, I, like, I have people I'm accountable to, but I know like, what I'm doing. People are like, hey, man, how long did it take you to get your size? I'm like, 37 years. Yeah, I've, like, I've oh, been figuring it out. <laughs> maybe he was born with it. <laughs> Dude, it just, like, I remember we called it Husky when I was in elementary school. Yeah. I wore Husky jeans, bro. Dude, like, I graduated high school at 30 pounds heavier than I am now. I was graduated high school at... 290. And, and you're I, so tall. I'm 5'9 on a day. <laughs> well, you app. lost a lot with the leg thing. I mean, I, maybe from the airplanes, from jumping out in airborne school, we'll call it. Like, I lost half I an need, inch. I need to jump out of an airplane. I think that's on my list. Hey, bro. Power to everybody that does it, skydiving, all that stuff. Like, everybody's like, hey, come skydiving, come skydiving. And, like, I'm always geeked up about it until I'm just about to jump. And I go, you're a fucking moron. <laughs> 
Like, I did it every time in the Army. It's like, yeah, like, I went up, and I was like, you're a fucking moron. Every time you're like, this every sucks. Time. Like, it's every time. It's like, you're a fucking moron. Like, I remember, like, I volunteered to ride around in, a, in a, like, a, an 1151, which was like a shitty Humvee in Afghanistan. I was like, you're a fucking moron. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just done doing moron that's, shit, That's bro. a really fair... <laughs> dude, I, have, I have a buddy, Max, that, that was in the Army and did, did Ranger stuff and did, yeah. did a bunch of jumps. Fuck that. And he said... He's like, it was never fucking cool. It was never. It was like, it takes too long, and I have to piss so fucking bad by the time that we that they let us out of the plane. I'm just trying to get to the goddamn ground. Yeah, that's it. I'm acting aggressively <laughs> because if I don't hurry up and piss, I'm going to do it in my pants, and I'm never going to explain that to anybody. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about jumping out yeah. of the plane. It's no, just a thing I, I have to do right now. Exactly. And like this, I just, like, it's not, and that's what I think I'm learning about in life is like, I'm not doing things because I feel like I have to anymore. Dude, don't do anything. Because you have to. No, see, like I, that's not true. Because then I just walk around and just fucking okay. So destroy I guess people's lives with fucking fists to the face. So what I guess what I mean by that, like, <laughs> like I don't operate out of obligation at all anymore. Yeah, and so I, I honestly just don't feel it. Yeah, like whether that's to family. I stuff think I'm or starting into else. that because I've learned to not respond <laughs> to shit. And, like, and s- not feel obligated to shit. But that doesn't mean I still don't feel like I have obligations. And so what, what, what it backs me... So I have responsibilities. Okay. So you're just calling it responsibilities. Obligations are a thing I have to do that I don't want to do. Okay. That's fair. You know, and look, I could say, well, my bills. I don't want to, but I have nah, to. But like, yeah, but I like the things. I like, hey, I like paying my I bills. I like all the fucking things that come with my bills. Is it? I was going to say, is it not weird to, like, feel satisfied paying your bills? Fuck, well, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's better than when I couldn't pay them. Uh, I remember being stressed out and not <laughs> being able to pay bills. I remember deciding which which bill to pay. Well, Be like, well they like, won't turn us off weird, for two months. It's weird because it's like, hey, man, like, and it wasn't I'm just going to fill my car up with a lot of gas because I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Dude, and, I, like... Like a, I had know, a gas card in, in college. My uh, oh, and my, my parents mom gave me. Up gave me a gas card, dude. I used to I fucking fill my friends up and get them to pay me cash. Oh my god, <laughs> dude, that was the same hustle. I bet, all right, bro, I'll Everyone's I'll got I'll a scam, 80, dude. Like, oh man, and like, I feel bad because my mom knew it was happening. She just bless her heart. You know, I didn't have a good exchange rate though. I went, I went like one for one. No way. Yeah. I really? would definitely be like, like if filling filling a truck up back you then probably cost friends, like bro? eighty bucks. Eighty bucks. If it was a big truck. No. Yeah, dude, gas. None of my friends fucking were paying eighty bucks in Louisiana for gas. No. Okay, this is what ninety. We'll say college was two thousand. This would have been two thousand two. Yeah. yeah so, so we're like dollar two, sixty. Mm, yeah, upper dollars. Yeah. It got crazy. After yeah. So that. maybe fifty bucks. Sure. I remember the first time a truck took like a hundred bucks for me to fill up, and I had like was in outside sales, and it was a diesel. Right. That took millions of gallons. Um, but yeah, I would definitely like if it tossed fifty bucks to fill them up. Like you give me thirty cash, and I'll fucking fill you up. And then I would purposely drive less because I knew I couldn't ring the card up again. Oh, so so dude, I was like, I I totally hosed them then because I was like, hey, I'll put fifty bucks in, but you give me fifty bucks cash. Yeah, I just put it on my wall. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, I mean, my parents were paying for oh, the 100%. gas. I was keeping the cash. Right. Oh, well, that's what I was doing. I was just doing a worse exchange rate. Yeah, you were, like, doing your friend's favor. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, go, trying to go for go quantity get, deals. Yeah, no, dude, I was... <laughs> it was a little better it's at a, it. It's a quantity game. Yeah. Oh, dude, but... Do you ever... You bounce in clubs and do all that? When I was younger. Yeah, of Like, course. in my 20s. Yep, that's when you do it. Yeah. Like, when I was able to go to table, like, I never really did the, like... That's why I hated Vegas, because I couldn't afford to do it the way I wanted to. Like party? Like, yeah. Okay. Because it was insane. So, like, I always liked smaller venues or, like, yep. cooler places. I like bars. Yeah. Oh, now I'll go to a I dive want, bar. I want a shitty three-piece band playing. Two pool tables. Yeah, like shit punk yeah, music. like. Like Alkaline Trio from yeah. fucking uh, mid-2000s. <laughs> fucking Natty Perfect. Light on yeah. top. I, I don't want there any <laughs> lights in this fucking place that aren't yeah. for a shitty neon beer sign. Dude, every VFW in America. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's actually supposed to be a pretty dope one in Texas. And yeah. So, 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 yeah, like, that. that's the bars I worked in. Yeah. I mean, fucking bars. I worked, like, like, so there was a stand where I worked in a nightclub. There was a stand where I was at a sports bar, and there was a stand where I was at a piano bar. But it was all in the same building, just separated off. Dude, those Karens at the piano bars would get fucking lit, hey, bro. When I was a, when I worked in the piano bar, like we got a lot of bachelorette parties, and I'd always be like, security guards underwear, and like, <laughs> like you're like 24, and you're like, yeah, sure, you guys all like, I'll go in the bathroom and take off my underwear for you guys. Like, oh, cool, you guys all got to take your shirts off before nice. I do it. So like, yeah, I was even dude. Steven. Hey. 
You, you have like, look, man, I, I, I had my. Uh, those, those were fun days, and I'm glad they're over, and I don't ever have to do them again. I'm, all of my naivete got stolen from me bouncing in the strip club, bouncing and DJ in the strip club. For I would four just years. walk. The, I would just walk the the stripper because our bar closed at two. I'd walk the bartenders out by three, and then the the girls, the strip, the strippers on the corner place would get out at three, and I'd walk them to their cars for fifty yep. bucks. Yeah, so we would we'd always just hang out and walk them to their cars. Yeah, well, we because we'd always just go to after hours too. Yep. Yeah, and I worked at a not cool strip club. No, escapades in fucking blue, Louisiana wasn't fucking real good. It's Lanny, Michigan, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're about the same. I'm I the give it a four, a four out of ten. <laughs> oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe they had all the U of M chicks that would come and strip, so they had like classic. <sighs> See, strippers. we didn't even get that. Oh, wow. we had a club closer to LSU. Oh, this was yeah. not that club. No, <laughs> we were on the, the closest, outskirts of town. This is the closest club outside of Ann Arbor you can strip at. So well, all the if, Eastern students would see. What I said, what I always said was students. the two things that described escapades were eager beats pretty, <laughs> and look, you didn't start dancing at escapades as your first bad decision in life. No, there's a long list there's, of left turns. There's a that long C section scar that stuff. brought you to that table at that time in your forties, uh, or your parents. But those, yeah. it always depends on who you're with, man. I can have the most fun oh. in the diviest fucking. Oh, bar of course, in the world. I like less cunty bars. Yeah, I always get like when I was younger. I should say we'd always get thrown out of the super nice. Yeah, we're not supposed to be in those places. Uh, like just we're because animals. We, Why yeah, would we be like, in there? But we'd always go in like twenty people deep. Oh God! And they're making enough money; they don't want to toss you. It's yeah. tricky. It's well, it's a nice happy balance when one of them's missing a leg, and it says <laughs> celebration too. <laughs> <laughs> so how many how many prosthetics have you gone through? Oh, dude, a shit ton. Yeah. Did you ever have like the old one that looked like a human calf? No, those ones are those are skin covers you can get for all. Oh, uh, okay. Like, those are actual cosmetic. Uh, so cosmetic. you could do that on this if you yeah, want. Yeah, I just okay. don't see the point. I'm, sure. No, like I mean, maybe for women, but even then, it's like it's still missing a leg. I don't know the whole industry, man. I think, yeah, I, to be honest, there's not much to it. There's like two major companies, and there's a handful of selections of everything. The technology's gone through the roof, but like they're all foreign-owned countries. They're all owned by like Iceland and. Oh yeah, yeah, Oster or whatever. That's who. Yeah, and yeah, they Autobot, did a hand yeah. of my shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. You ever think about? I like high thoughts about stuff. Um, if you were gonna ever get into running, let's say, and you yeah. were gonna run on a track, okay, like in an oval, would you ever choose like two right foots, like two right shoes, because you'd constantly yeah, you're just like turning? Leaning in. It depends. I would. I would only be able to run if I. That that would only do it if I ran with my sound foot on the inside. Yeah. So I would need two left foots. Okay. Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to run le leveraging oh, on the angles. Yeah, on yeah, this. gotcha. Yeah. Okay. If we're getting scientific. Would it, do you think it would help having the same, I don't think it would Probably make any not. difference. No, not enough. Not, I'm not fighting for that one <laughs> inch, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like getting newbie gains anytime I do that. So, yeah. Now, is, is there like other levels of prosthetics that do just, specific yeah. shit or so like i have a th this is like there's three r 80s there's three r 60s there's three r 90s based on standing running like the, oh, okay. the one's like three r three r 60s and running knee that's like the micro the, the the mechanical but smaller lighter with the faster reef like snapback okay so you basically you you load it and then it breaks and then it snaps right back got it so it's there yeah so it's there and it's all momentum based on whatever your nubs left so can you run on your mechanical at all? Uh, I can get to the point of like a like a. I feel like I can, but the knee's still too slow. Okay, so is it is it, it's got to be a crazy feeling, like because you don't have the feeling, but just trusting you that the, thing's going to hit there. Yeah, like it, it's and just catch. Kind of, you're so like that just comes down to like rhythm, flow, and like. <sighs> Like, trust, man. It'd be like running on crutches, like, you know, this, without your legs. This knee sucks. I hate this knee because it sticks a lot. <laughs> right. Because I don't, tr I don't toe walk like a lot of amputees. Uh, I, gotcha. I like flat foot walk, so I have to, like, load the toe to get that spring back. Mm. So this thing sticks a lot, and you'll see me kind of straight leg, skip it out. And uh, that's frustrating. But, no, it's all, like, kind of, like, a calculated, like, practiced risk. It's like... 
like the foot's not been there before, and you sure fucking fuck. just all you do is catch the ground. Yeah, like, you, you don't <laughs> realize God what's happening. It. Oh no! Because if you actually try to react to it, you could hurt yourself sure. more by throwing your nub under you, or stepping yep. your leg out and straining your hip, or catching an elbow. Go to the shoulder. Oh, that's it. PLF. Yep. Like that's how they teach you to fall out of a plane and land. Like you fucking die, fuck or yep. calf die, fucking. That's flat. same same reason. Yeah. The only reason I've been okay with like mountain biking or that is like I learned how to fall. A long yeah, one hundred percent. I got fucking get get to the meaty parts. Yeah, <laughs> get to get to the thick parts and then fucking roll, roll. with it. <laughs> yep. God damn, dude. Yeah. So I, like that's just kind of like you learn how to tuck, and like falling now I don't like. I don't think I've fallen on the leg. Long time. Well, like, sockets were, like, there was a point where I would fall, like, all of the time. Sure. Which would be, like, regularly, like, weekly. Like, learning to walk again. Yeah. I fucking imagine. Well, even just, like, learning to walk on different surfaces. Like, the first oh, time I shit. walked on, like, wet marble. Fuck. Like, I didn't realize, Oh, like, dude, you don't, was, you don't have any feel. That's no, fucking crazy. No, you don't. And the worst part is, is, even when you do, you're anchoring in, you have the feeling in your hip. Oh. So it's like, how much weight are you actually putting on it versus how much contact are you feeling on the ground? Right. Yeah, that's, that's fucking wild. Okay. All right, I know you're on the Yeah, clock. I gotta go now. All right, I'm brother. Stay. Thank no, you, No, I appreciate it. It's always it's fucking fun awesome. to shoot the shin. No, I, hey, bro, you helped me gain an experience today. It was awesome. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys for listening. Where can they find all you? Uh, I'm just on the ground, bro. There Derek, D-E-R-I-C-K underscore Carver. There we go. That's it. I'm easy. Thank you guys for listening. We'll talk to you next week.